Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another Facebook Live um, art demo instruction. Uh, with myself, I'm Autumn, the Education Coordinator for Studio 23. So if you just tuned in to the bit that Tara did about Josh Roop and his artwork, you saw that um, he does pieces that there's a lot of uh, printing involved in it and um, he has a lot of pattern and texture to it. So I came up, came up with a project that was inspired by Josh Roop's art. And um, so we're going to be, this is actually going to be a two part lesson. We're going to do, what we're going to do today is we're going to make some artist papers that we're going to be printing and then we're going to let those dry and then tomorrow we are going to be putting those together into a multimedia sort of um, collage paper piece that we're going to be using all of our um, artist papers for. So if you're not entirely sure what I'm talking about when I say artist paper, um, I made some beforehand so you could kind of have an idea. So artist papers are kind of just, you can take regular old paper and you can add pretty much anything you want to them, paint, marker, or whatever, to create a pattern, color, and texture, um, which you can then use for other art projects, which is exactly what we're going to do. So today we will be making artist papers with potatoes. I was trying to think of a way we could do printmaking that, um, that anyone could do and that um, wouldn't be terribly expensive so mom and dad wouldn't be too annoyed if you know you you use some of their stuff and I figured potatoes would be a great way to do that so um, you there are multiple ways we can do this first of all you're gonna want um, paper probably lighter paper would work better but you, you know maybe you could get creative with it I just have regular old construction paper that's what I was using to make my artist papers. Now uh, you can also you can you can do the actual printing in three different ways. I tried out some various ways. I did acrylic paint, so this one was done with acrylic paint. I did um, markers, so if you only have markers and you don't have access to paint, you can absolutely still do this project. And um, oh, this one was done with watercolor paint, so if you only have access to watercolor paint, you can still do this project as well. Um, oh, and the, here's another one. It looks like it looks like I used watercolor and acrylic paint for this one. So for this one, I tried to mix it up and get a little multimedia. So let's get started. This is going to be fun. So what we want to do is you want to rinse off uh, a potato. Any potato will do. Um, I have some that I worked on from the last couple of days right here. So as you can see. This one I cut widthwise and created a, a stamp in it. Now for this stamp, I cut away, right, if you can see that, I cut away into the potato. Um, so there'll be like negative space here. And for this potato, I cut lengthwise and I cut around what I wanted. I don't know if you can see that. I cut around this kind of feather shape so that sticks out. So the only negative space when I go to print will be around the edge and then the little lines I put in the feather. So when you're cutting your potato, that's something to think about and maybe even plan out like, okay, what kind of design do I want? Do I want to have a negative space um, print or positive print? Um, so definitely something to consider, but you can you you can cut your potato both widthwise or lengthwise. They'll both turn out great. Um, and I carved these all with a regular old um, butter knife because I just wanted to make sure that if kids were doing this that nobody got hurt. And it worked just fine for me, so I think you're going to be just fine. So let's get into it. So we just want to cut our potato. I think I will um, cut this one right in half widthwise. Okay. All right, got a potato. I didn't do anything fancy with mine. Um, I just I just decided what pattern I wanted and I went for it. Now um, I did try drawing on my the inside of my potato at first with marker, with pen, with pencil, 
nothing really worked too well for me. Um, so I think this is one of those things where you kind of just have to draw with the butter knife. Um, so let's just do a heart. I think that would be a nice shape. So I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna, to do my heart, I'm gonna make a, a V shape up top. And then I'm gonna try and round, let's see. Do my little round. All right. So there's the top of my heart shape. I don't know if you can see that. That's the top of my heart shape. And then I'm gonna just bring it down into a big V shape so I have the rest of my heart. All right, so now that I have my heart shape, I'm going to carve away the outside part. So I'll have a positive stamp. This will show up the color of paint or ink I put down, and then the rest will be carved away so you won't see it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna start to kind of carve in a little bit to the potato. Anyway, just sit down for this. And I'm just gonna start peeling away the outside part that's not the heart. I don't wanna peel away the heart, I just wanna peel away the outside. Now you can also do this project with other fruits and veggies if you don't happen to have potatoes around. Um, I've, see, I've seen people do um, printmaking with all kinds of fruits and vegetables, uh, apples. Um, you can do a really uh, interesting um, rose or flower pattern with um, the end of celery that you don't use. So that would be another thing you could do. And if you didn't have any of that around your house, if, um, if you had some extra fruit or veggies, maybe you could even just uh, try it out and you know, practice, investigate, and see what you come up with, because maybe you could come up with something that I haven't even tried before. All right, I think we're, we're in good shape. So I've carved away the outside. There's my heart, okay? So that with my positive image, right? So let's see. What kind of, all right, I have my paper. And for this project, I don't really think it matters if, um, let's see. I don't think it really matters if the paper is portrait or landscape for this. I don't think it matters at all. Um, yeah, I hope everyone can see this okay. Diane and Ron, yes, please let me know if, if you're not seeing this, if reception isn't so good. Um, okay, so let's try, let's try it with acrylic paint. The acrylic paint is probably my favorite. So I'm gonna just get a little water on my brush. I'm gonna take a little bit, I think I have some, this is some phthalo green, and this is just regular acrylic paint, but you could easily use craft paint if that's what you have. Um, you could even get away with children's paint, I think, like tempera and, um, things of that nature. I think it would work just fine for this project. So I'm gonna get a little phthalo, take a little white, and some of this yellow ochre so I can tone it down a little bit. Ooh, I like that. All right, so we're gonna go with that color. A little more water. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna use the side of my brush. So I'm gonna paint this way, not like this. And I'm just gonna put a little layer right on that heart, just like that. Okay, and now we're ready to go. Now we're ready to print. And all I'm gonna do is I'm going to start pressing down and I'm gonna do a decent amount of pressure. And um, I'm just gonna change the direction every time I press it down. Now, as you'll see, the hearts will get lighter and lighter because there's less paint on them. Um, but I kind of like that. That's kind of the look that I am looking for. So 
I'm going to keep doing that. So go in with more green. Go stamp again. And I'm going to keep mixing it up in direction. And I'm just going to keep layering it. This is like so many pieces of art that we've worked on on our live series. Um, really, it's all about the layers, building up layers. I think just so much, most art is really just about building up the layers anyways. But So as you can see, we're starting to create this, this texture and pattern here. I think I'm going to go through and do one more because I really love this color. This is, this is a beautiful green. It's making me think of spring and making me think of being outside, which I love. All right. And I'm just trying to find places where maybe we need to fill in a little bit. All right. I think that's good. All right. So now I think we're gonna, I think I'm, I'll do one more for you. Um, I'll carve the other way so we'll have negative so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's get my knife and let's see. Um, we'll do, let's just do a big X shape. I think that might be interesting too. So I have one line and another line to make my X that I have made with my butter knife. And then I'm just going to go in and Basically, I'm carving another little line next to it so I can make this line nice and wide. I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. Popping that out. All right, so as you can see, I've basically just widened my um, my X that I made. And so this is going to be negative stamp. So you'll see my paint here, here, and here, but where the X is, you won't see anything, okay? So we're going to do this one now really quickly. Um, you know what? Let's do it on the same paper. That might be interesting. And this time, I think I'll just use my phthalo green so it's a little bit darker. So let's do that. Get my phthalo green. I'll do a tiny bit of white. Okay, so I'm gonna go in same way when I when I brush it on. I'm gonna brush it, holding it like this. I don't want to hold it like this, like this, so it can go on smoothly, easily. And I know I can control where it goes that way. All right. And we're ready to go. We're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna stamp it, and I'm gonna. I'm going to move my hand in different directions while I'm stamping. Brush some more on. And because this, this stamp is a lot bigger, because it's more of the more of the potatoes being covered. I don't think I need it quite as many because it's a lot more impactful that way. It's covering a lot more space. So I think I'm good with that, but I look at all the pattern and, and texture and even color that I have going on here. So I'm going to let that dry. I'll probably work on like one more here while um, we move on to Vail. But um, this was part one of our project for um, tomorrow, or, or today and tomorrow, I should say, that our, it's our Josh Roop inspired uh, children's art piece. So if you plan on following along with me tomorrow, I would suggest you make probably, um, I'll say at least six to eight sheets of your own.